Hi there. In this tutorial, we're going to be concentrating on sampling in Reason 5. Now, sampling is brand new to Reason, and it's an extremely welcome and useful addition to the software. Most of you are going to find it really usable in your projects, regardless of the kind of music you're making, and it should give you a real creative edge. Now, sampling is a really feature-rich section of Reason, and we're going to cover every aspect in the coming videos. But before we dive in, and learn how to record your own samples and sample into individual instruments, let's look at what sampling actually is. Now, technically, sampling is just recording a sound, storing it, so that we can play it back on any controller like a keyboard or a drum pad. The very early samplers were analogue in nature, and they actually used tape-based systems to record and play back their sounds. In fact, the very early Mellotrons used a single bit of tape loop under every key to record and play back as you played the keyboard. So a pretty impressive system, but pretty crunchy in nature and pretty basic with the results that you could achieve. If you look at this NN19 sampler in the rack here, I've got a Mel Strings patch loaded up, and this is actually a recording of a Mellotron and gives you a really good idea of what they sounded like. So let's have a quick listen to that. Like I said, it's really crunchy and really tape-like, but that's something that we strive for in our productions now and again. Samplers soon moved on from this and they became digital in nature and started to store their samples on digital media like microchips. The early digital samplers were actually 8 and 12-bit and we saw machines like the Roland W30 and S550 competing with the Akai S900. Now, these couldn't really store many samples and your available sample time was really short probably only 10 or 15 seconds, but this was enough to sample drum sounds and sound effects to put into your productions. We soon moved on from this stage though, and 16-bit CD quality sampling was soon industry standard with the Akai S3000 series. Sampling times grew when we started to use hard drives and large amounts of RAM to store complex instruments. Now in modern systems, this is really commonplace and now we can sample in 24-bit and 192 kilohertz. The amount of voices and the amount of samplers that we can have is really only limited by our system's resources, so you can go as far as you want until your computer folds. You can see in the rack here I've got an NN19 and two NNXT samplers. The NN19 is probably the most basic sampler in reason and it mimics the front panel of an Akai. The NNXT is more complex in nature, and if we open the editing panel here, you can see that there's a lot of controls, and each of these relate to each individual sample. So you can have literally thousands of different parameters at one time in one sampler patch. Now, as I said before, you can sample a drum kit. You could cut a drum loop up and span its individual elements onto separate keys, or you could just use raw drum samples. You could split up a vocal performance into different phrases and span them onto keys. But there's also more complex uses for samplers, like this grand piano patch, where somebody has actually sampled a grand piano at several different velocities and spanned each key onto the keys within the NNXT. This is then saved as a patch and can be played back at any time. You can get really realistic instrument effects, like this piano here. and even at low velocities, we get a really realistic sound. So this just shows you the versatility of our software samplers. Any sound that you can record can be put into a sampler patch. This patch above here is full of sound effects and it gives you a really good idea of what can be achieved. So really, the only limit to how you use your samplers is your imagination. They can become exactly what you want them to be. 
But of course, the only limit in reason up until now has been that it doesn't actually sample sound. So you've had to rely on third party sample collections, samples you might already have on your drive, or samples that you've recorded with hardware or other software. But now, with sampling, we're able to record our own sounds and build our own custom sampler patches. And that's what we're going to look at in the following videos. Next up, I'm going to give you an introduction to sampling in Reason 5 and hopefully give you a basic overview of how it all works.